Our next speaker I'm excited to introduce actually is Ron Voigt, who's president of x Right Pantone. He's going to be speaking today on the counterintuitive magic of specificity, which sounds very intriguing. I want to start today with a quiz. All right, quick show of hands. What is this picture of? What's this representing? You know? You do, but you're going to be quiet. Let's see if anyone else knows. Any? Yeah, we have some guesses. Does this help? More hands go up? This is, of course, this is Paris. This is the city of lights. This is a city that I had the privilege of living in for a couple of years with my family. And Paris is an absolutely magical place. It was really uh, you know, one of the hearts of the Enlightenment in the 18th century, and it's brought so much in terms of culture and learning to us. But when you live in Paris, you get a very clear sense of the differences between the left bank and the right bank. Now, the left bank is most closely associated with creativity. It is where the Latin Quarter is located. It's where the artistic hubs are of Paris. It's really where the creative community for over two centuries has been based. The right bank represents really what is more upright, or as Parisians might say, uptight about the city. It's where the financial institutions are located. It's where businesses are. It's really where business gets done. The left bank and the right bank are separated both physically and in a way metaphorically by the Seine, which is the river that flows through Paris. Now it's this image and this metaphor that I want to carry forward today as we talk about some of the differences and some of the key elements of the design process that we're all engaged in. Now some of us may view the world and the people in the world as belonging to two different types. I probably represent the right side of this picture. I'm an executor, I'm an executive. I was trained as an engineer. I'm focused on going from point A to point B and trying to figure out how to move things forward. Many of you may represent the left side, the innovators, the creators, the thinkers, the people that bring new things to light and really bring us much of the imagery and the objects that make our lives very pleasurable and enjoyable. Now, it's not too much of a secret to know that there is some conflict between those on the right and those on the left. In many instances, in many situations in our professional lives, they, they really don't get along. Now, the, the way that they don't get along and the way that that conflict exists is rooted somewhat in culture. Now, in the American culture, we think about those individuals on the left as really driving or leading to a large degree innovation and design and change. But that isn't always the, uh, the, the way it exists in other cultures. A colleague of mine recently related a story that I think originated with Neil Stevenson from IDEO. And he was talking, or he told the story about the space race from the 1960s. And uh, some of us in this room may date ourselves in a way to, uh, to go back to the 1960s. But the space race literally and figuratively consumed the attention of the Soviet Union and the United States in the 1960s. And we often think about the end of the space race when the US successfully landed someone on the moon in July of 1969 and then returned them successfully to Earth. But what is less known, or at least less talked about, about the space race is that the Soviet Union essentially led that race for most of the 1960s. They had the first object in orbit. They put the first man and the first woman in space in orbit and returned them successfully. And they were actually working on a moon landing when the US got there first. The difference is that the leader of the Soviet state space program, Sergei Korolev, died unexpectedly in 1966. And his absence from that program really brought it, you know, frankly, to, uh, to almost a halt and allowed the US to win. Now, Sergei was not a creative. He wasn't a person that was represented on the left side. He was a taskmaster who was almost militaristic in the way that he drove innovation and leadership for that program. 
The only reason I relate those, that quick story, is to say that leadership, as it exists or should exist, doesn't necessarily lie on the left or the right. It comes down to the situation in which you're up, uh, the situation in which you're involved. All right, let's talk about something which is a little bit closer to home for most of us in this room. And that is the conflict that often exists between design and production. And to take that conflict a little bit further and talk about it, that left side, that focus on innovation, and the right side, the focus on execution, often has conflict as each side is trying to fulfill their needs throughout the process. That conflict starts at the very start of that process, and the differences between the left and the right, innovation and execution, can accelerate or become larger as time goes by. We think about that difference between the left and the right in terms of the workflow that people are engaged in as they bring a consumer product, for instance, to real realization or a new packaging design from concept to reality. And we think that that left and the right is represented by the two sides that you see in this workflow. The left side represents concept and creation. It's where brands, where designers, where creatives are involved in thinking about the object or the good that they're working on, how they want that to be realized. On the right side, you have the processes of pre-production and production, where those who are involved in execution are responsible to take that design concept or that thought and put it into production. What we found is that there is a roundabout between the left and the right that represents the inherent conflict between the interests of both of these groups. Designers and, creator, and creatives in the world of color want more colors represented on more substrates. They want more choice to represent the way that they're trying to bring something to light. On the right side, the production teams are worried about cost. They're worried about quality. They're worried about all of the things that come into actually producing the object. And between the left and the right in that roundabout, roundabout sits a tremendous amount of waste and really the loss of productivity as each side is forced to negotiate with the other to make the, the object flow through the workflow. If you talk about some specifics, um, at x and Pantone, we work a lot with individuals who are responsible for packaging. And so this specific example comes out of the packaging industry. We found in surveying people who participate in this workflow that the waste of communication associated with going from one side to another through various loops of the process can consume one to three months and can add over 5%, in some cases as much as 10 to 15% in cost to what it takes to bring the object to market. The production waste can easily consume one to three months as well, can add over 5%, and in some cases can represent very, or can result in very inconsistent color between the vision that existed on the left and the reality that was realized on the right. Just to give you a specific example to, to try to visualize this idea. On the left side, you see here the designer's intention. It's a coffee cup that includes vibrant colors, well executed on a number of different substrates. This is the image that was in the mind of those that were on the left side of the roundabout. The execution, unfortunately, can be quite different. You have colors that aren't represented in the same way on two different materials. And you have colors that as a result of their, e of their reproduction are not harmonized well. This is a brand marketer's nightmare. It's essentially the difference between what you wanted to put into the hands of your consumer and what the consumer actually got. This is a result of that roundabout and the inability to work effectively from the left and to the right to arbitrate and to make certain that what was designed was actually realized in production. 
So if you step back, you have to ask yourself the question of who's responsible for this? I would say that the reality that we have and what I'd like to challenge you with today is that it's the creators on the left side. It's those who are involved in that design and that concept who really have the responsibility for making sure that that problem is solved and that you have exactly what you wanted in production. Now, we all strive for and look for a world where everyone just gets it. I mean, the imagery is clear. You see the hands linked of people working together through that entire workflow to make sure that it's realized or executed in the right way. The reality, unfortunately, is much different than that. And as a creative, you are challenged with a significant difference between what it is that you wanted to realize and what you actually realized. But why is it that we say that the responsibility lies with the individual on the left side to solve the problem? I want to just start out with, uh, with two different definitions. First, a definition of a designer. A designer is someone who plans the form, the look, or the workings of something before it is built. Pretty straightforward, represents what many of you are involved in every day. Now, I think your role as a leader in this workflow really is derived from the fact that the definition of a leader is very similar. A leader is someone, a person who commands a group, organization, or country, or it's someone who guides others to a destination. It's a visionary or someone who's ahead of others. I think it's pretty clear that as a representative of what it is that really represents the vision and where you want to go, you as a creator have the responsibility as a leader to make sure that we realize things as, as the work flows from left to right. Now sometimes people that are involved in the creative process pull back and say, now wait a second, this isn't necessarily my role as a leader. If you look at some of the leadership profiles, sometimes they don't necessarily match up with the classic leadership picture. In addition, from some of our work that we've done through the Pantone Color Institute and others, we found that as it relates to color, there's a gap in information and a gap of knowledge that gives people the capability to act as leaders through the whole workflow. 56% out of a group of almost 2,200 designers that we surveyed over the last uh, uh, two years said they, they were only moderately knowledgeable about how a particular color that they picked during the creative process would be represented in reality through production. 28% had little or no knowledge. Essentially, only 16% felt that, like they had very, very good knowledge which essentially leaves a population of 84% of the group that really need to be represented as the leaders who lack this information to represent color in the right way. So there's a significant challenge that's associated with this. Now, as a creative and as a leader in the process, your responsibility and the work product that you have is really putting specifications and driving specificity in the system as it relates to your vision. And I'd say that there are two elements of the specificity that are important for you to realize as you grab onto your role in the process. The first one is to be very, very concise. It's important to put your specifications into the most compact and easy to understand form that's possible. We heard just a few minutes ago about the, the PDF specification that was literally hundreds of pages long and that was out of date almost as soon as it was put into effect. Your role is to make sure that your, your specifications and your specificity is alive and concise. The second element, however, and an element where the tools that can be provided and that exist in the digital world can help you is in the area of achievability. And it's being able to understand as you're going through the design process, as you're involved in the creative process, exactly how a color 
or some other element of your design will be represented in production. It's understanding and knowing enough about how things will actually be executed such that you can make the decisions up front in the process. So those two elements are really the elements that I want to leave you with with respect to your responsibilities as a leader. As you think about specificity, be concise and understand in a clear way what is achievable. On the first point, in terms of being concise, I want to just go back to, uh, to one of the most famous speeches in American history, the Gettysburg Address. Lincoln put forth a very, very compelling vision for where the country or where he thought the country should go after that terrible battle in that terrible war. It took him 272 words, and he spoke for just over two minutes to create a vision which at that time unified the country and in many respects continues to inspire us. What is somewhat less known is the person that immediately preceded Lincoln, a person, uh, his name is Everett, spoke for over two hours with 12,000 words in 62 paragraphs on what was essentially the same topic. But the specifics of what he said have been lost in time. And it was Lincoln's ability to be concise that really made his speech an icon and something that is translated even to today. We have to think about the same thing as we're working on design and as we're trying to put that into reality. Now, there's some tools and some things that we can use to allow ourselves to have much more specificity in the way that we bring objects to light. There are tools that have been a typical part of our toolbox, from color swatches, preferably from Pantone, to style guides, to product prototypes, all of the things that have existed for years in the analog world. But now, with the advent of the digital world, with mobile tools and technology, we have new tools that are available for the creatives and the design side of that workflow to make sure that color standards, for instance, are understood up front in terms of their achievability or their reproducibility on different substrates or different materials. There are brand microsites that drive us to specific specifications and definitions and can level the playing field and give everyone the basis of the same information. And finally, there are virtualization tools that exist now in the digital world that never existed before and that can help link or unify the workflow and make sure that that vision is indeed realized in reality. Now, as I talk to designers through our clients and through, uh, through brands, I hear a lot of pushback on some of the things that I've just told you about in terms of specificity and the importance of being concise and, for, and focusing on what is achievable in design. One of the pushbacks is in the area of cost because there is a constant fear that by being too clear or too specific up front, you'll drive yourselves into a higher price solution that will work its way through to the end product that you produce. What we found through working with clients is that really the opposite is the case. If you are not specific up front, if you don't embrace the two points that I gave you earlier, you can find that that roundabout can consume loop after loop after loop and cost you time, money, and effort. In our surveys of designers, we found that 68% of them go through that roundabout at least three times as they go back and forth to production as they move to design. A full 18% of them go through the roundabout more than five times. Imagine what that can do to you with respect to cost and the penalty that you play for not being specific. Another pushback that we hear is that there is some fear that people don't necessarily want to commit. They think that by committing, they are somehow penning themselves in too early in the process. But the real truth of specificity is that being specific as far up front as possible allows you to focus on unlocking your creativity and focusing on providing value through the confidence that you can give in design. 
Absent that specificity, you'll spend time in the roundabout and you'll take time away from the value add that you can provide to your clients and to their customers. Another fear or pushback with respect to specificity is that somehow by being overly specific and taking that leadership role, we risk falling into a tyrannical behavior or being viewed as being uh, too strong in terms of driving. The real answer here is that being specific puts you in a leadership position. Believe me, everyone that's involved with the, within the workflow wants to have as little involvement as possible in poorly defined specifications or going through that roundabout time after time after time. By being specific, you'll save time for yourself and for others and will be viewed as a leader in the context of the entire process. Finally, we hear that it really isn't worth it to get specific and that the time that's required to drive a level of specificity isn't worth the investment for individuals. But the truth is that by being specific in the process, you can allow your design to achieve portability, which gives you more time, again, to work on the value-added elements of your job and to focus more on what's important as you think about creating a vision that you bring to your customers. So at the end of the day, just imagine it. What if we all took a leadership role early in the process, defined specifics with respect to our de design parameters in a very concise way and with a view of what that entire workflow can actually achieve? My challenge to you is to first understand that this problem, this, or this, uh, this roundabout that consumes time and energy, it exists in every organization. And I would challenge you to think that it really does exist in your organization. The tools that are available to help you in this process, they exist. Don't think that your organization is perhaps too small. The beauty of digital tools is that they are scalable and that they can be really used in an applied solution for all. At x and Pantone, we have the privilege of working with customers every day who represent primarily through their association with Pantone, the creative side, and with x the execution side. We have the opportunity to see the waste that exists between those two sides. And I think that it's something that we can help you reduce, and together we can help all of us overcome. So appreciate your time today, and I wish you the best of luck with your design challenges and your execution challenges in the future. Thank you. <clears throat>